diagonal matrices play uh, are actually very convenient they are very easy to understand and uh, for instance if you have a diagonal matrix the eigen values are the diagonal elements and so on there are so many nice properties that diagonal matrices have um, and so in general we want to know if a given matrix a is similar to a diagonal matrix okay that is to say that the matrix a it belongs to a certain equivalence class and does this equivalence class contain any diagonal matrix in it okay so that is the following definition is diagonalizable if it is similar to a diagonal matrix so when is a matrix diagonalizable so we have the following result is diagonalizable if and only if it has n linearly independent eigen vectors Okay, so that is the requirement that it must have n linearly independent eigenvectors. And we've already seen that um, if a matrix has distinct eigenvalues, then the corresponding eigenvectors will be linearly independent. And so any matrix uh, that has n distinct eigenvalues will necessarily be diagonalizable. of course a matrix could have repeated eigen values and still be diagonalizable and the identity matrix is um is an immediate example all its eigen values are equal to 1 it has n repeated eigen values and it's already diagonal so it's all it is diagonalizable and in this case you can also see that any non singular s is such that if i do s inverse times the identity times s gives me a diagonal matrix so the matrix s that transforms the identity matrix to a diagonal matrix can be any non singular matrix s so that also shows you that this matrix s that defines the similarity transform connecting a and b to matrices it need not be unique okay so let's just see how this is proved um so if there are n independent linearly independent eigen vectors x1 through xn then let the matrix s just be a stacking of these vectors i'll not write it with commas x1 stacked with x2 xn so this is an n cross n matrix so we'll show that this matrix works okay it will uh, reduce a to a diagonal matrix so all we do is we consider s inverse as which is equal to s inverse times a times this matrix x1 through xn and this matrix uh, uh, so if i expand this product i will get s inverse the first column of the product will be a x1 the second column will be a x2 a xn 
and because these are eigen um, eigenvectors of this matrix A, this A x1 is some lambda 1 x1 s inverse times lambda 1 x1 lambda 2 x2 up to lambda n xn. And if I consider a diagonal matrix with lambda 1 through lambda n as its diagonal entries, then I can write this as S inverse times x1 xn times this matrix lambda, where lambda equals, it's a diagonal matrix. Okay, this is just rewriting this product here. But then this matrix is just S, and so I have S inverse S, which is the identity matrix, which is equal to lambda. So we've shown that the matrix actually gets diagonalized. So what this shows is that if there are n linearly independent eigenvectors, then the matrix A is diagonalizable. By a similarity transform, I've reduced A to a diagonal matrix. I, since it's an if and only if condition, I need to show the converse also. So if what, it, what we need to show is that if A is diagonalizable, then it must have n linearly independent eigenvectors. So if there exists an S such that S inverse A S equals lambda, where lambda is some diagonal matrix, then it means that a s equals s lambda. I'm just pre-multiplying by s. So this, just if I write out what this means in words, this means that a times the ith column of s is equal to, but lambda is a diagonal matrix. And so that will be, so the ith column of, so this will be the ith column of a s. So A times the ith column of S is equal to the ith diagonal entry of lambda times the ith column of S. Which means that the ith column of S S is the eigenvector of A associated with the ith diagonal entry of lambda as eigenvalue. Okay, so, um, so basically what this means is that the columns of S are essentially eigenvectors of this matrix A and the diagonal entries of lambda are the eigenvalues of this matrix A. And uh, of course, since by definition, if A is similar to a diagonal matrix, this S is a non-singular matrix. So since S is non-singular, There are, or A has n linearly independent eigenvectors. So that completes the proof. So basically, this result that uh, A is diagonalizable if and only if it has n linearly independent eigenvectors. So, in principle, this is a way to diagonalize a matrix if it is indeed diagonalizable. So all you need to do is to find eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the matrix A, and then you check whether the eigenvectors are linearly independent. And if there are n linearly independent eigenvectors, then you can just stack those eigenvectors together, and that gives you the matrix S, which is a diagonalizing sim uh, similarity matrix. 
Okay, so this is one way to find uh, how to diagonalize a matrix A. So again, coming back to our previous example, this matrix 0, 1, 0, 0 is not diagonalizable. Okay, what it means is that it does not have two linearly independent eigenvectors. So, I mean, if, if this was actually diagonalizable, then there must be a matrix S such that S inverse times 0, 1, 0, 0 times S is equal to a diagonal matrix containing the eigenvalues, which is the all zero matrix, because both its eigenvalues are zero. But then this implies that uh, if I pre and post multiply by S and S inverse, it means that 0, 1, 0, 0 must be equal to with 0, 0, 0, 0, which is not possible. Okay, so this matrix is not diagonalizable. And in fact, um, this matrix has only one, one eigenvector corresponding to lambda equal to 0, which is the, the vector 1, 0. So if I multiply this vector, this matrix by 1, 0, I will get 0, 0. So that is, uh, so 1, 0 times this matrix is equal to 0 times 1, 0. And so 1, 0 is an eigenvector of this matrix corresponding to lambda equal to 0. And I cannot find any other linearly independent eigenvector of this matrix A. So we see that the number of linearly independent um, eigenvectors of a matrix uh, that you can find corresponding to an eigenvalue can be less than the multiplicity of the eigenvalue. Okay, the multiplicity of the eigenvalue zero in this matrix is two. Okay, it's an eigenvalue of multiplicity two, but the matrix has only one linearly independent eigenvector. It does not have two linearly independent eigenvectors corresponding to lambda equal to zero. So basically not every n cross n matrix will have a full set of n linearly independent eigenvectors. Okay, so here is so here's another direct consequence of what we just saw. If A in C to the n cross n has n distinct eigenvalues then A is diagonalizable. This is an immediate consequence because if it has n distinct eigenvalues, then it has n linearly independent eigenvectors. Okay, and um, so we just saw that result. A has n linearly independent eigenvectors, which implies that A is diagonalizable. Okay, obviously the converse need not hold that um, if uh, A is diagonalizable, then it need not have distinct eigenvalues. And I already gave you the identity matrix as, a, uh, as an example. Okay, it does not have uh, distinct eigenvalues. All its eigenvalues are equal to one, but it's uh, of course diagonalizable. Okay, so now we've seen that this similarity matrix that say diagonalizes a matrix need not be unique. So uh, a related question is, um, uh, is it possible that there is a single matrix, similarity matrix that will diagonalize both uh, two different matrices? So we say that A and B are 
simultaneously. Diagonalizable. If there exists a single matrix S such that S inverse AS and S inverse BS are both diagonal. Okay, what this in, in words means is that there is a basis in which the representations of both these linear transforms are diagonal. Okay, so both these are diagonal. They need not be the same matrix, the same diagonal matrix. All you need is that S inverse AS and S inverse BS are both diagonal. Okay, in other words, A and B need not be similar to each other, but they can be simultaneously diagonalizable. So here is one result which I won't prove but it's nonetheless true, is let A and B be N cross N matrices. Okay, and so suppose these two matrices are diagonalizable. Okay, then A and B commute that means AB equals BA if and only if they are simultaneously diagonalizable. Okay. The, the proof is not difficult, it's just uh, somewhat long and so um, I don't want to do that in class. It basically uses an induction argument on the matrix size to show that um, they commute if and only if they're simultaneously diagonalizable. Okay. Um, there's one other important result um, which uh, which we will use quite quite a lot in this course and it's also a very useful result. So that is this result. So let A in C to the M by N, now no longer square matrices. And- Hello, sir. Yes. Uh, sir, uh, what do you mean by A and B will commute if in there? I just said it in words, but oh, okay, 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 yes, with M less than or equal to M. Okay, then B A has the same eigenvalues as AB counting multiplicities together with Okay. 
and additional n minus m eigenvalues equal to zero. Okay, so in another way to say it is that that is if I look at the characteristic polynomial P B A of T that is equal to T power N minus M P A B of T. So this has N minus M extra zeros because T equal to zero is a repeated eigenvalue zero of this polynomial uh, with repetition N minus M times. So there are additional N minus M zeros. Of course, the matrix B A okay, is of size n by m n by n and this is a matrix of size m by m and m is smaller than n less than or equal to n and so this has more number of eigenvalues it has exactly n minus m additional eigenvalues more on top of whatever are the eigenvalues of a b but the uh, the the there are the m eigenvalues of a b will also appear as m eigenvalues of b a and in addition, B A will have N minus M extra eigenvalues, which are all going to be equal to zero. And if M equals N and at least one of A or B is non-singular, so they're both square matrices of the same size. Then AB is similar to BA. Okay, so This is one example where um, from this result, we see that if I apply this result to the case where m equals n, then a, b and b, a will have the same eigenvalues. But we've already seen that two matrices could have the same eigenvalues, but not be similar to each other. But what this is saying is that if at least one of these two matrices is non-singular, then these two matrices will be similar to each other. Okay. So this is one example where having the same eigenvalues is actually sufficient in uh, for the matrices to be similar but provided two other conditions are satisfied namely that uh, m equals n and at least one of a or b is non-singular okay of course uh, yeah the, the thing is we are only comparing ch checking whether a b and b a are similar okay so there isn't time to see the proof of this in this class so we'll see the proof in the next class which will be wednesday of next week uh, that's all for today